Some players in rhythm games were so far ahead of their time at one point that a few of their scores still hold up by today's standards. I figured I'd go ahead and highlight some of those scores in this video, because I think a lot of these serve as fun, little brief history lessons in various rhythm games. If you guys want to see this turn into a potential series, you can all submit a score over on my Instagram at etienneyt, as I'm open to games of all types and would love to diversify the series more. I also don't really announce this too much formally, but I do stream a good bit where I play and talk about rhythm games over on my Twitch channel at etienne underscore yt, so go ahead and drop a follow over there if you're interested. With that said, let's just get right into the first score. When Solus 2 came out, it looked pretty much unFCable upon its initial release, but when Solus 3 came out, the community saw a lot more FC potential in it. With a few intense drumming sections, plenty of hard solo sections, it looked at the very least viable, but practicality was the main question that needed to be answered. Two players were in contention for this FC, Guitar Hero Phenom, aka Danny Johnson, and G Gamerman, both who had a 99% on it and also had full solo FCs under their belt in 2010. After Danny's 955k score in September of 2010, no more scores of him would surface, and G Gamerman would come out of nowhere with the first ever FC on it on January 21st, 2011, with the second FC not being until March 31st, 2013 by Toby GH3. Now, if you go to this video, you might be wondering why there's a 50% like ratio on it. And the only thing I will say is that unfortunately, fanboyism was very abhorrent in the Guitar Hero community back then, and Danny Johnson just happened to be the most popular player at that point. So people weren't exactly the happiest when G Gamerman got it before Danny did. The score is pulled directly from his livestream, and the taps and strums sound just fine, along with G Gamerman being a very prominent top player in the community albeit a vastly underrated one at the time, so for anyone that still might think it's fake, it might be worth retracting that statement for such a legendary score for its time. Holy shit! Holy fuck! Oh! My. Fucking. God. Um, I guess nerfs don't get to me. I did that in career though, so the gold stars aren't gonna show off. But I don't fucking care, I just have seen Solus 3 with a horrible score. Three hundred BPM streams back in two thousand five were a rare sight to see for any playstyle, and were reserved for the strongest players in Statmania. A nobody joined the Statmania scene in two thousand five and posted very impressive index scores out of nowhere with no prior context. This led multiple people to be suspicious, but he would eventually start providing videos of all different skill sets, and they ended up being the real deal, including this one. It took about 8 years for another player to pass this on index, and only a couple of others hold the title of passing this notorious file with just two fingers. But a nobody's pass was immensely ahead of the curve, and just a stunning play to watch. His playstyle is very explosive, and he doesn't really try to conserve energy at all. He just brute forces it with sheer forearm strength, which is insane for a file this fast. If you happen to be interested in super old school top players, a nobody is definitely one to look into. Pro Keys was one of the most unique things Harmonix introduced into the Rock Band series, as it allowed a niche group of consumers to jam along to some of the best synth grooves or piano solos in the game. The learning curve for Pro Keys is also rather difficult compared to the standardized instruments Rock Band offers, as the Pro Keys controller is quite literally a mini keyboard with a 2 octave design and 25 keys to focus on. Jared Fidelli was the pioneer of Pro Keys during the early 2010s, uploading first ever after first ever FC knocking out the hardest disc song FCs on Rock Band 3 out of the way, until he got to Roundabout. If you're not that familiar with Pro Keys to begin with, the first half of this might already look pretty hard, and for most people, it really is. But the reason why this song went un for so long was because of this. 
This is the guitar break. 45 seconds of fast, repetitive patterns that might not seem too bad once you're used to it, but if you pay close attention, there are tons of varying gaps in between the notes, meaning this section is consistently altering between random BPMs, making it grueling to time. In Jared's FC video description, he notes that he was basically trying to optimize where he was supposed to blink, because this section is so technical that it requires that much focus. The organ solo right after requires lots of movement and good timing as well, so you're not even close to done once you've hit the guitar break. Jared's domination of the pro keys genre was unrivaled in Rock Band 3, and this is just a fantastic example of it. Mine, mine. Oh my god. Oh my god! I gotta see it! Oh man. I can't believe it! I did it! Oh man. Oh. You don't know how happy I am. This is. This is wonderful. Reading 1x speed during the early years of dance games was a very hectic and controversial topic, but would eventually subside over the years and only bothers dance game boomers who haven't watched any DDR videos in the last decade and a half. Windu is no stranger to being a reading specialist in dance games, but Blood Rush is one of the last charts you would want to see on 1x speed in this game, and it's insane to think that this was possible so long ago, and a pretty funny jab at people who were against speed mods to begin with. With tons of crossovers and a 79 BPM slowdown section, he FCs this with a 99 back when 99ing this with speed mods was considered pretty damn impressive, and honestly, it still is to an extent. Just one of the many examples of Windu's insane reading shenanigans, and just a pretty fun score to watch overall. I would give my soul for that score. <laughs> Index was one of the best players in the world in Osu during the mid-2010s and had a very diversified playstyle overall, but his hard rock plays stood out among others, and this one blew everyone away when it was first set, and still does since the only other player to FC this on hard rock is Idki from last year. With a circle size of 6.5 on hard rock, streams on this map require a great amount of aim precision and streaming accuracy since it's OD10 as well. For a minute and a half straight, you're hitting broken up streams the entire time with various amounts of spacing and patterning to throw you off, and a few slider sections that can be pretty easy to slider break on too. After the solo, there's a bit of breathing room, but the map throws one more hard streaming section at you with pretty hard spacing to really test your nerve control, and Index tackles it like nothing. Most are probably not aware that this was Index's second FC of the map, as his first FC with slightly lower accuracy would be taken away due to the map being disqualified. Not too long after though, Index re-FC'd it again once it officially became ranked. So if anything, this is the last score you would want to call a fluke, and easily one of the best hard rock plays for its time. Fucking hype. That was fucking tough. Ah. Yep. For those who aren't familiar with the term ridiculous in Step Mania, it was an extra judgment back then that people would add into their games to give them an extra challenge for accuracy scores, as it was exactly half the timing window as the Judge Ford Marvelous window which made a ridiculous 11.25 milliseconds. Nowadays, everyone plays on Judge 7 to emulate the ridiculous judgment. 45 marvelouses at a time where triple A this file with a decent perfect count was considered good really shows how impressive Blue Mystic's accuracy was back then. If I'm being honest, even today's accuracy players would probably struggle to keep up with a score like this. And there are definitely other scores of Blue Mystic's where he displays amazing accuracy on various files that could be hard to compete with as well. Not too much else to say about this one, the key taps sound so smooth, and the score is just as smooth too.
Oh, I got a perfect point. That's still really fucking good, though. Alright. Let's go. Rock Band Network completely shapeshifted the difficulty curve of Rock Band in general, which allowed some of the most difficult charts to be created as a result. iHomer X360A basically hosted an FC gravestone for how many first ever drum FCs he knocked out from 2011 to 2013. We Are The Nightmare explains itself quite well in the title, as this chart is pretty much a nightmare. <laughs> the first 20 seconds alone are some of the hardest material in all of Rock Band drums. Super fast blast beats, roll transitions, and these outright absurd broken polyrhythms that take hours and hours alone just to understand them. You have to hit these polyrhythms and rolls three times, but before the third time, you also have to hit these super long blast beats at 250 BPM. There's also plenty of other rolls and tricky sections throughout this hellfest of a chart. But needless to say, scores like this from my Homer and more really rose the barrier for what was possible for rock band drums, and that barrier is still actively being pushed today. Most of you are probably surprised that I didn't include a DDR or ITG score from Chris, but I would argue that this is perhaps one of Chris's best scores to date in any rhythm game he has ever played. Euphoria is a very technical file from In The Groove, chock full of 30 second drills, crossovers, and one of the most annoying slowdown sections ever. Obviously he can't see the slowdown, but the timing is still super awkward, and unless your ghost tapping is on point, you're gonna get lost. Not that this part matters too much, but I found it pretty insane that he's doing all this on tiny laptop arrow keys. Chris had uploaded two videos of him playing the chart before this one, a quad A with good ridiculous accuracy, and a quad on invisible on 1.0 rate. Who knows what led Chris to his obsession with this song, but the result was one of the most nutty memorization accomplishments in a keyboard game. I remember coming across this video when I was a kid and having absolutely no clue how Kobayan was capable of doing this at all, and about 15 years later, I still have the same thoughts. Back then, there weren't a ton of methods to really memorizing charts either, since video footage wasn't that common, and if there was any, the quality was traditionally pretty bad. Your best bet to memorizing charts back then was to just, well, play them a lot. A decade and a half later, there are still no stealth AAAs on any doubles chart that I can find on YouTube mainly due to them being far harder to memorize by nature, so the fact that this chart out of all of them is the only one that has a stealth AAA attributed to it is just mind-boggling to think about. I can also assure you that near the end, he isn't just turning his back to the screen for style points, even though it does look quite stylish. This is actually the only way you can hit these patterns without double-stepping, so major props to Kobeon for sticking to the chart's intentions to the fullest and for getting one of the most impressive double stealth AAAs if anything, the best known stealth doubles AAA in DDR. Kukizi has quite the history with this map, as he destroyed it on Nomad back in 2013 with 1100 and had been grinding the song on and off ever since. The hidden Hard Rock FC was more or less a myth for the longest time, as it was something everyone wanted to see, but barely anyone thought it was truly possible until Kukizi started showing some viability for it. 
220 BPM streams with Hidden and Hard Rock is a terrifying sight alone, but with the insane differentiation and spacing throughout the map, along with its relatively technical rhythm spread throughout, it's not surprising that no one but Kukizi was even remotely consistent at it, especially in 2016. To this day, only two no mod scores even beat Kukizi's accuracy, which shows that this score aged like fine wine given the amount of talent Osu has today. At the time, the score was worth 800 pp, but with the recalc, it got boosted up to 894. This is perhaps the most iconic Osu score in the history of the game, definitely one for the books, and of course, ahead of its time. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Again, for any submissions for the series, feel free to DM me over on Instagram at etienyt. Thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel, and if you'd like to see more rhythm game content like this, feel free to check out my Patreon along with my other links below. I'll see you all in whatever video I upload next, and take care.